Oh boy, I am still pretty sore. A hundred miles. It's a, it's a long way. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dave from Chase to Summit. And today I wanted to talk about my experience while running a 100 mile ultra marathon while wearing the Garmin Foreigner 955. If you haven't been following on my channel and maybe you're new here, uh, about a week ago, I ran the Vermont 100 Endurance Race, which is a 100 mile ultra marathon. And during that race, I wore this watch. This is the Garmin Foreigner 955. And in the comments of that video, I got a bunch of questions about which watch I wore, was I happy with it, how did I set it up, etc. So I thought I would make a whole video about it and talk about my experience with the Garmin Foreigner 955, the usability of it, the battery life, and all of the nitty gritty details about using this thing in an ultra marathon or endurance race environment. And so if you're a cyclist or a golfer or a triathlete or anybody else on the planet, you probably won't be interested in this video. But if you are an endurance athlete or an ultra marathon runner, maybe Ironman athlete, you might be interested in this video because it might answer some questions that you don't see in other videos. Before we get all the way into this video, I do wanna give a shout out to the sponsor of this video and that is playbetter.com. Playbetter.com sells Garmin Foreigner 955s and all Garmin's and Suntos and Koros and Polar, just about every sport watch on the planet. And they offer free two day shipping and a no hassle free 60 day long return policy, which is great. So you can change your mind two months later and still get your money back. So yeah, if you're interested in picking up a Foreigner 955, check out the links down below because they do help support my channel and they cost nothing extra to you. Okay. Let's move on. So the first topic I wanna to talk about on the Foreigner 955 during this event is gonna be battery life because that's the one everyone seems to be the most interested in. I ran this 100 mile ultra marathon in 25 hours and 19 minutes. And when I hit stop on my watch and check the battery life, I had 53% left on the battery on my Foreigner 955. Now you might be wondering, why does that seem better than the specs on Garmin's own website? Well, for a couple of reasons. Battery life is hugely dependent on how you set up your watch. If you take the Foreigner 955 out of the box and just go run, you probably won't get the same results I did. So in order to maximize the battery life during this event on the 955, I did a few things. First of all, I turned Bluetooth off. Why did I do this? Well, because during this event, this course had basically no cell phone coverage. So I had no way to contact people. I was not receiving text messages. I wasn't getting emails or anything. So it didn't matter if I had a Bluetooth connection to my phone. I didn't really care if I was gonna get notifications because well, I wasn't getting any notifications anyways. Another change I made was in the GPS settings. In my trail run activity, you can see here, I have GPS set to GPS only. Out of the box on the Garmin Foreigner 955, it will be set to all systems, which will give you more accurate GPS tracks, but it'll take a little bit more battery. I set mine to GPS only to maximize the battery life because during this event, I didn't care so much about perfectly accurate tracks, even though it was still really accurate. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Another change I made to maximize the battery life on this watch was to turn down the backlight brightness to 20% during my activity. This reduces the backlight brightness overall and thus takes less battery. In the final setting I changed on the 955 to get the most battery was turning off the gesture based backlight. Basically out of the box, if you have the watch on your wrist and you flip it down and flip it back up again, just like that, the backlight will come on, which is great if you're just living your life and looking at a text message. But during this ultra marathon, I didn't find myself using that too often, so I actually disabled that feature entirely, so the backlight would only come on if I push the top left button. Keep in mind the Garmin Foreigner 955 I have here is the non-solar model. This does not have the solar function at all, so yeah, this is the base model, $499 version, and I got really good battery life out of it. Okay, moving right along, let's dive into the next topic, and that's gonna be GPS accuracy during this 100 mile ultra marathon. If you take a look at the watch here, you can see during this activity, the watch recorded 100.4 miles. Now this course is supposed to be 100 miles, but I didn't measure it myself. So I don't actually know if it's exactly 100 miles. I should hope it is. So if that's the case, we're about four tenths of a mile off. And I think over the course of 100 miles, four tenths of a mile off 
isn't too bad. Another thing I noticed after analyzing the activity in Garmin Connect and on Strava on the map is that the track actually landed right on the road where I was running in most cases. So to the eye and by distance, GPS accuracy still looked really good considering I was using that GPS only mode and I really have no complaints using that. I think moving forward when I do another ultra marathon, I will definitely leave it in GPS only mode just to get the most battery life out of it. The next topic I want to talk about is wearability and comfort. I wore this watch for that full 25 hours. I was sweating a lot. I was eating things. I had watermelon dripping down my arm. It was gross. I'm sorry. But uh, the watch was very comfortable for that entire time, both thanks to its extreme light weight. And I also like this third party band I bought on Amazon, which I'll link in the description down below. This is not a Garmin band. It's made by a company called Ancool or something but I find it to be really comfortable and it was only like $10. Next up, I wanna talk mapping and navigation. This one is a little weird because I didn't use mapping and navigation all that often on the Foreigner 955 during this particular event, but I did use it a few times to check where I was. The reason why I didn't use it is because this course is really well marked. They have a course marker like every 10 feet, so I didn't really need to have the GPX file on my watch. However, there were a few times where I took a wrong turn or it was dark out and I didn't really know I, where I was and my mind wasn't really in the right space. So I did load the GPX file of this race onto the watch to double check my location. And when I loaded the GPX file on the watch and I loaded it into my activity, one thing I noticed is that it loaded extremely quick. Compared to something like the Garmin Phoenix 6, which is a little bit older, that watch could take like two, three, four minutes to load a big GPX file like this, whereas the Garmin 400 955 was almost instantaneous. This was hugely valuable because I found myself enabling navigation to double check my location and then turning off navigation when I didn't need it anymore so I could kind of do it on the fly. And I also think this helped with preserving battery life a little bit more because it wasn't doing the navigation function in the background the entire time. Now that we talked navigation and mapping, I want to talk reliability. This is another thing that I've noticed in the past could be a problem when you're loading and unloading courses and doing all sorts of things on your watch during an activity. In older watches, I've had issues where the watch will restart or turn off or there might glitch out and exit your activity or something like that. I did not have that issue at all on the Garmin 400 955. This watch was rock solid for me throughout this entire event while loading courses, unloading courses, pausing the activity, doing all sorts of things, going back to my home screen to see what time it was, and I had no issues this entire event. The next thing I wanna talk about on the Garmin Forner 955 during this event was durability. So I was out there for 25 hours. I was, you know, in the dirt. I was eating watermelon and bacon and had things dripping all over it. I was sweating a lot, and the watch fared pretty well. However, after several weeks of using this watch, I have noticed that I do have a couple of little scratches on the Gorilla Glass screen. Not sure you can see them on camera, they're pretty minor, but they are there, and that is kind of a bummer. So I think moving forward, I will order a screen protector for this watch just to make sure I don't scratch it any further, but it might be something for you to consider as well if you have a 955 and you think Gorilla Glass is kind of unscratchable. I'll tell you firsthand, it is not. Other than the Gorilla Glass though, the entire body of the 400 955 is basically in flawless condition and still looks brand new after several hours, several days of use and months of use, wearing it every day to sleep, you know, going to work with it, all the things, it still looks great. Okay, at this point of the video, I wanna share some of the details of the actual activity from after I saved it to Garmin Connect so we can look at some of the information I got from it because some of this is kind of interesting. So as you can see here, we've got my Garmin Connect Connect account with the Vermont 100 Ultra Marathon activity loaded up. You can see the distance was 100.37 miles. The time was 25 hours, 19 minutes. And I burned about 12,000 calories during this activity. But what I found interesting about this is if we go over and click this little icon on the right, which is the graph tab, it shows you a lot of information that I find kind of interesting. So first we've got pace, which is a 15 minute average. This is a long race. You're not running this at a seven minute pace. Um, and if you scroll down, you've got your heart rate, but here we've got the stamina 
The stamina feature is new to the Garmin 400 955. This also came out on the Garmin Phoenix 7. And stamina is supposed to represent how much potential energy you have for your activity. And I found this kind of funny because if I click in on this, on this graph, it shows on the bottom the duration of time. And on the left column there is the amount of stamina I have for this race. So at the beginning of my race, you can see here on the stamina graph, I had about 89% of my stamina which is pretty good. That means that I've got a bunch of energy to start running. And then you can see I start running and you can see right at the beginning, I came out a little too fast. So it actually dropped rapidly there because I was running a bit too fast of a pace for to sustain it for this entire race, obviously. So I slowed down a little bit after that. And you can see that the, uh, the stamina was a little bit more gradual in its reduction. But what I find interesting is that right about at the six hour mark, I'm at 1% stamina or 0% because it doesn't go any lower than that. And for the remainder of the race, for an additional 19 hours of running, uh, I was still at 1%. Now, I don't know about you, but I think if I was at 1% of stamina or energy, I'm not sure I'd be able to run for another 19 hours. At the end of the day, I don't know how useful the stamina graph is for an ultra marathon. Obviously, if I'm at 1% or 0%, I'm gonna continue running, I'm not gonna quit right there. So I just found that interesting and worth sharing. I don't know if it's of note, I don't know if they envision this in their use case, but yeah, kind of interesting stuff. And with that, I wanna move into how I set up my Garmin 400 955 for this ultra marathon. You might find it useful, I don't know. But if I dive into the trail running activity, which is what I use for this ultra, and hit go, we can see my data pages and how I set them up. So you can see here on the first page, I've got my elapsed time on the top here. I find elapsed time way more useful than like moving time, for instance. Below that, I've got the distance on the left here. I've got my average pace next to that. Then I've got my battery level on the bottom left here. I find that really useful. It's just kind of peace of mind while I'm running. And then next to that, I have my total elevation ascent. So that's the total elevation gain during the activity. And way down at the bottom here, I've got a little heart rate graph and I find this incredibly useful for ultra marathons. I told myself I was not gonna let myself get my heart rate over about 60% of my max heart rate, which is like 130, between 130 and 140 beats per minute. So during this race, I was routinely looking down at this little heart rate graph on my wrist to see where my heart rate was at. If I was a little too high during a big climb, I would dial back my effort and try to get back into that green zone to make sure I didn't burn myself too early. I know a lot of people use a ton of data pages in their watches during the activity. For me, I really like simplicity. So I've got one data page with six fields for all of my pertinent information. And when I hit the scroll down button, it actually brings me to the map view so I can see where I am in relation to the course. Scrolling down one more time gives me the time of day. I also find this useful to make sure I'm on track, make sure I'm gonna finish on time or whatever. I find this pretty useful. Okay, and finally, I wanna talk about how I've been recovering from this ultra marathon and how I've been using the Garmin 400 955 as a recovery tool from this race. So right now it is seven days post race. So my ultra marathon was seven days ago. And during the past seven days, I've gone through a little bit of everything from being super sore, not sleeping well, uh, trying to get back my sleep because I didn't sleep for a full day and just trying to get over the soreness. And there's a couple of really cool features on the 400 955 to help me do this along the way. So if I scroll down from the watch face here, I've got my training status here or my VO2 max. Scrolling down again is my training status. And then scrolling down one more time, I've got training readiness, which is a new feature on the 400 955. Diving into this, you can see that my training readiness is right about 47%. And this is because I'm only seven days out from the ultra marathon, I also ran today. I ran uh, five miles today, a really easy effort. So I'm not quite back in the green zone. So that helps me identify if I should be going out and training hard or whatever. Here you've got the factors for training readiness, like my sleep, my recovery time, HRV status, acute load, sleep history, and my stress history. And everything's starting to look a little bit better from where it was a few days ago. But the one feature I found really interesting post this ultra marathon was HRV status. Your HRV might drop if you go out and have too many drinks one night, or if you train too hard one day, or if you're actually getting sick. HRV is a really cool metric for identifying all these factors to see what kind of activity you should be doing that day. If your HRV is really low and you're not feeling great, maybe skip that marathon. 
But what I found interesting about this is the information it gave me after this race. So you can see here, my HRV status says unbalanced because I've had some wobbly HRV over the past week, obviously. But if I dive into this, we can get even more information. If I scroll down to the graph view, you can see here that my HRV completely tanked after the ultra marathon, which was on Saturday. You can see on Sunday, my HRV is basically off the scale. It's not even on this graph anymore. Then on Monday, Monday came up a little bit, Tuesday up a little bit, Wednesday up a little bit, and you can see the trend. It starts to creep all the way up where it's almost back in the normal range by today, which is Saturday, seven days after the race. And I don't know about you, but I found this really cool to see how I was feeling reflected almost exactly in this graph on a daily basis. It's just really interesting that a watch can pick this kind of information up. And I know this is not a medical device, but all this information combined gave me a really good idea of what kind of activity I should be doing on a daily basis after this race. If I should be going out and trying to run a little bit or just continue, continuing to rest up, trying to get rejuvenated for a run the next day. So yeah, that's really it for this short video, even though it's not that short. I just want to share my experience while using the Garmin Forner 955 as an ultra marathon runner, somebody who's taken it out there and actually did the thing and now is in recovery while using the watch for that purpose. And I know you don't need this watch to run an ultra marathon. You can get out there and just run without a watch, but having all this tech and all these tools built into this watch and right on your wrist and available, is really useful and it takes a lot of the stress off your mind. So that's really it. And now I wanna hear from you. Are you using a Garmin Forner 955 as an ultra runner? Let me know in the comments down below how it's been working out for you. If you've had any issues with it, I'd love to hear from you. And once again, if you're planning on picking up a Forner 955, make sure to check out the links in the description down below because they do help support my channel and they cost nothing extra to you. And that's really it. That's all I've got for this one. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below because that really helps out my channel and helps me grow and I really appreciate that. Okay, friends, I gotta go now. This room just got really hot. I gotta get outside and get some air. All right, I'll see you next time. Bye.